Oh, okay. So I have two good stories for you. Uh, I'm feeling really sick to my stomach right now, but it's because uh, I just downloaded the expansion pack for Power Wash Simulator, and it's the Final Fantasy VII expansion pack. <laughs> and that made you feel sick? Yeah, because the motion sickness, because right oh. now I'm, I'm currently cleaning Tifa Lockhart's bar, 7th Heaven. Oh, God, I thought that was going Tifa Lockhart's body. <laughs> And no. I was like, this is Power Wash Simulator. Suddenly I'm interested in Power Wash Simulator. It's not murder simulator. It's Power Wash, but I'm cleaning her bar. No, I meant like maybe I had to sexily give her no. a bath oh. or something with a power washer. I guess that would kind of hurt. That would, I, I think it would hurt you badly. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Bad choice. Yeah. But uh, it's because I was looking up at the ceiling, cleaning it, and I just, I started feeling so sick to my stomach, so I had to stop. So that's why I'm feeling nauseous right now. I got oh. a VR set for PS4 like a while back, and I thought it was before or around when I had my first kid, and I was like, this is going to be great. This is how I'll escape. I can't leave the house, but I will do VR. And I tried it once, and I was so sick, I had to lay on the floor for like two hours. Yeah, yeah. It is intense. Uh, apparently, I'm not made for virtual reality. You, it takes a lot of practice, and you have to just keep trying. But oh, just not gonna barfy stomach. I decided oh not God. to do that. <laughs> so, if anybody needs virtual reality, uh, I've got a headset, and I'll sell it cheap. Oh, there you go. Ooh. Instagram Marketplace. Oh, yeah. Okay, my second story is a cat story for you, based on hunter killer Perfect. that you were sending pictures of for those who don't know which is literally everyone, everyone. Uh, hunter killer is the name that we've given to a cat in our neighborhood uh she was once found in a tree in our backyard with blood all over her face uh <laughs> after which we noticed that there was the body of a decapitated rabbit below her and then we found that head later on in uh in our garden bed Oof. and that's how hunter killer got their name absolute unit as they say it really is it is a unit of a cat like it is sturdy e d e as they say she's got Oof. it she's got it okay so this is one of my most favorite stories i had an acquaintance who um was in greece in athens and apparently there's this huge feral cat population in athens and he was there for a few days and he was taking pictures of all the cats because I guess there's like a cat sanctuary or whatever. And he's taking pictures with these cats. And one of them was being super playful, like hunter killer, like lying on the ground, being all adorable. And he thought, oh, I'm going to pet the cat. And it bit him. And he's telling us this story back in Canada, like three days later. And, and he's got no hand. <laughs> No, he's, he's, it's infected. And so he's, yeah. he's bandaging it. And our, our friend Mel, who's amazing, at that point in time, she was a veterinary technical assistant. And she was like, that's not a good story. That's really messed up. You need to call HealthLink or 311 or whatever. So for those that don't know, that's just like a phone number you can call. And it's like nurses that can tell you if what's wrong with you needs to be diagnosed by a doctor or if it's something you can take care of at home. Spoiler, they always tell you to go to the doctor. <laughs> they always tell you to go to the They're like, hospital. well, I can't really say, uh, but if you're concerned, yeah. go to the doctor. <laughs> yeah. Go to the go hospital. To the hospital. <laughs> God. So he's telling us this story and she's like, you need to call right now. And he's kind of laughing and he's on the phone like, okay, you you know, I'll do it for you. And he's on the phone and you could see at one, like he's recounting the story and his face just falls and he's like, oh, 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 so go to, go to the hospital right now. Oh, oh, okay, okay. And so he hung up the phone and he was super pale. And he's like, they, uh, they need me to go start taking rabies <laughs> shots right now. So, and he then proceeded to have to get several rabies shots. And he said they were super painful because they had to be like shot into his tummy <sighs> in a very yeah, uncomfortable like the back way. Of a Volkswagen. So, <laughs> I meant like under his ribs, but I do appreciate the joke. <laughs> oh, yes. Uh, yeah. For any Kevin Smith fans out there. Uh, so let that be a lesson. Don't pet uh, Greek cats. I, I don't. That seems xenophobic. <laughs> don't don't pet feral cats wherever you happen to be in the world just because. But the catch 22 is you won't know they're feral until you pet them. <laughs> Sometimes they're delightful house pets that have just gotten outside and going for a walk. What I say is... If you pet a cat and it bites you and you need to go to the hospital after, 
still worth it. It was worth it to get that pet, to give that little fuzzy belly a big, big rub. <laughs> worth Until it. Until the rabies sets in. Or you lose your hand from some sort of viral infection. One or the other. Yeah, you know. Let's, uh, let's do what we do, which is continue on here. <laughs> Dork out. Welcome back. Uh, this is Dork Matters, a dorky podcast for dorks. I am your dork dad host, Ben Rinkle, and with me is Lexi Hunt, your Ed Dorkator. Uh, how are you doing, Lex? Good. How are you? How are you? Good. That's how we always start, by checking yeah. in about our, our feelings and our health. Yeah, we're good. <laughs> feeling okay. Uh, are you yeah. amped up for this session? I'm really excited to talk about... What are we talking about? We're talking about Zelda! Dun, 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 dun. Oh, I'm so excited. At some point when I sing that song, it always turns into something else, and I don't remember exactly where that happens, but it always No, can I ask you, when you hear the Zelda music in your head, is it like the mm-hmm. pixelated like Game Boy music, or is it like an orchestral mm-hmm. rendition? It's orchestral. Really? Okay. Uh, it's, 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 yeah. It's, uh, it's definitely orchestral. It's like the fields mm. when you first get into high gotcha. school in like, in like Twilight Princess, I think is, oh, okay. or even Ocarina of Time, like the, okay, that's good. I, I have the Game the Boy chirp. pixel music just playing in my head at any given time. Oh, for me, it's definitely, I don't know at what point, but it became more orchestral, more arranged and yours is more adult. Mine is very, like it's stuck in. 1996. Uh, I honestly can't even <laughs> call that up at this point. It's just like the more arranged version for me. Oh, well, I'm sure Jess can put in the difference between the the pixelated and the orchestral. Oh yeah, we're going to be asking Jess to uh, to dip in here with a whole oh, bunch of musical yes. cues. Thanks, Jess, the best. Um, because. Specifically, we're mostly here to dork out about the timeline uh, um, because it is a wild, uh, yes. wild thing. And we've got a new Gosh. game coming up here, yep. uh, Tears of the Kingdom, which is the direct sequel to Breath of the Wild. Yep. Uh, what, like a couple days? <laughs> is it April April 4th or something? Uh, no, it's in May. It's May that it comes out. Yeah. Oh, they pushed it. I forgot they pushed it. But so it's, I'll, I'll give them a month. That, I'm okay with that. Uh, May is fine. That's fine. It's no problem. It's in um, and you know, that gets you wondering sort of where things happen and when, and like, why, why mm-hmm. do we care about the timeline? Because we're dorks and that's interesting. Oh yes. It is so interesting. It is a delight. Now, where do we start? Um, Should we start with an overview of Zelda? Yeah. Just a little, a little background about the old legend of Zelda. The laws as they call it. The laws? Yeah. Haven't you heard people refer to it as laws? No, really? Neither. Why? I just made that up. Oh, L-O-Z. I was going to be like, L-O-Z. Man. Laws. No, the... T-Laws. T-Laws, yeah. Legend of yeah. Zelda. I'm, I'm good with that. That's good. Okay. Wikipedia, Benjamin, yeah, tells us that the series was first developed in 1986. Ah, 1986. A good year. Were you even alive? We were all alive. I was. I was born in 1985, so... Uh, I'm, I'm 84, so we're both young. Yeah, we're super young, and it's cool. 80s. 80s, yeah. Uh, cars without seatbelts. Yeah, people smoking everywhere. <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> Restaurants, <laughs> walking down the street, your grandma uh, smoked. Yeah. yeah, what else? McDonald's was very dingy. Yep, you could smoke in McDonald's. It had this oh, sheen. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They had pizza and McDonald's at one point. Like, it was just wild. That was in the 90s. Was that in the 90s? I think so. I think pizza didn't come till later. God, it was just like the Wild West in the 80s and 90s. This happens when you get older. Things from the 80s and the 90s kind of blur together into one sort of my youth. Yeah, mush. But uh, so 1986, we, we start the journey, which is centered around Link, who lots of people will mistakenly call Zelda. Zelda is not the main character per se. You play the character of Link, which is a courageous young man 
um, who comes from the, I guess, the race of Hylians. Oh, yeah. Hylians. Uh, it depends on the game, I think. Hylians? Yeah. Hylians, yeah. Yeah, um, because, well, he's still Hylian mm-hmm. in Ocarina of Time, but he comes from, like, a fairy village. Yeah. So he's he's yeah. part fairy. He's I think he's a fairy. I, th- I we think so. We can get so. into that yeah. because, like, there, there, there is... I think some conversation to be had about what Link yes. is exactly because Link keeps showing up well, time after time, time after time. And that, that is one of the questions about, is he a godlike being? Because, um, okay, let's back up. So uh, original Legend of Zelda is released in 1986. This series of games actually has 19 different iterations on many different game consoles, including yes now are those mainline games or uh, those some of them are yeah or is that including uh like link dx or whatever that abandoned one for the super nintendo dx or whatever that was called it's it's a little bit of everything we've got like okay. um high twilight princess ocarina of time majora's mask but also things like um triforce heroes uh spirit tracks game boy advance stuff etc et okay, okay. yeah those types of games so it's it's everything we'll go through this we'll do like a run through the timeline once we get this yeah um, it also has been in an animated TV series, which we have talked about briefly on the show in the past. Well, excuse me, princess. One of the better TV shows from our youth, I would say. Uh, up there with uh, Captain N or whatever and uh, the Super oh, yeah. Mario Brothers Super Show Paisano. Oh, yeah. With a really inappropriate Italian rendition of a long hair, like a mullet. Mullet Mario. Mario. Yeah, let's Mario. bring it back. Oof. Um, and let's see. So, yeah, uh, one of, many people would say that um, Legend of Zelda has been voted uh, one of the greatest video games of all time. Um, Legend of Zelda takes place predominantly in this medieval-like Western European-type world. Yeah, I'd yeah. say influenced. You know, it's all made-up BS. Mm-hmm. So Yeah. Well, I mean, it, it isn't real. It's not based on on fact. It's it's <laughs> it's not real. It's not our no. history. It's not real European history. You did not descend yeah. from the Hylians. Your family did not come here from Hylia in 1893. It's, I like this. So the fictional universe established by the Zelda games um, sets the stage for each one. Some places, uh, some games take place in different lands with their own backstories. Hytopia is a connected kingdom. Um, Holdrum, like lots of different countries and regions are all connected sure. in Hyrule. The realm of dark, like the dark realm or whatever, yeah, other things like the that. Rule. But the whole point is that uh, Hyrule was created by three golden goddesses, which um, basically make up the Triforce. And before departing the land, the goddesses left a sacred artifact, the Triforce, which could grant powers to the user. May I drop? Do it. In here yeah, do with it. a little interjection. Sorry, Lex. We've got Din, the goddess of power, created the land. Uh, Nehru or Naru, the goddess of wisdom, created order. And Faror, the goddess of courage, created life. And they created the Chai Force and gifted it to the goddess Hylia. Mm-hmm. Power, courage, and wisdom it represents. Why is there a, a hierarchy of goddesses? I don't know. But there's I don't know. three goddesses that then pass power down to another goddess who then passes power down to... Our Triforce holders. Lots of uh, the games allude to Princess Zelda being a reincarnation of like the goddesses on Earth or having like a direct line. In some of the games, um, she plays kind of like a, like a priestess who mm-hmm. her whole life is devoted to praying to the, the three goddesses. And then her relationship with Link is that something bad happens to her. She's typically kidnapped, stolen away, imprisoned, whatever. And Link has to go visit her. And who is the bad guy in this world? <laughs> I like that he has to go visit her. Don't say her. He's just got to go visit her. He goes and checks take her, her out. Some, he uh, checks her out. Well, I like to see if she needs help because I feel like the more mm-hmm. recent yeah. games, she's a little more empowered and she's like, I don't need your help. More agency. Well, yeah. and he often ends up being a tool at her discretion yes. to be used. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we've got the three Triforces. We've got the Triforce of Power, which is the topmost. Uh, And that is embodied by our boy Ganondorf uh, or Ganon, depending on his iteration. Mm -hmm. Uh, And then we've got the uh, lower right, which is the Triforce of Courage, uh, which is embodied by Link, the hero. And uh, the bottom left, which is the Triforce of Wisdom, 
uh, embodied by Princess Zelda. Zelda. Mm-hmm. Um, and theoretically, courage is, uh, and wisdom are supposed to be the counterbalance to uh, power, which is supposed to be sort of all-consuming and sort of evil, which, you know, I would like to get into sort of like, what up with that? Like, does that necessarily, like, yeah. why don't we have a game where, uh, you know, Zelda gets to be bad and Ganon's the hero for once? Yeah, I w- I'd love to see, like, there, everything that can be done with this series theoretically has been done. I still love it, but I'd love to see them really mix it up a little bit. Yeah. Play from the the opposite side. Sure. Like if they're supposed to be a triforce, that suggests a balance. Mm-hmm. And and any aspect of those three things I feel like could go out of whack at some point and uh mm-hmm. need to be counterbalanced by one or, or two of the others. We're getting off topic. We're getting but it's but it's good. So that basically, long story short, it's the same storyline in many different games settings with variations but it's yeah. always zelda in trouble link to save ganon antagonist yeah and then a whole cast of characters that includes some like delightful non-playable characters mm-hmm. some playable characters some people are great some people are bad but even like the bad guys are really awesome so the yeah. bad guys are great yeah they really are who's your favorite if we could just maybe before we get into timelines the timeline and- the multiverse and talking maybe. about multiversal theory and <laughs> alternate yeah. realities and really leaning into what i love about this kind of bullshit which is is that sort of string theory shit of yeah. how does it work how does a timeline converge spoilers uh how does it split um, does, but who's yeah. our favorite characters yeah who's uh, your favorite characters outside of uh zelda and link you know what it's kind of easy but i'm going for tingle mm-hmm. I, I thought you might go Tingle's for tingle hilarious. yeah why do you love Tingle so much? I think Tingle just feels completely ridiculous. And I like ridiculous. I like uh, his green bodysuit. I love his commitment. And I also his like <laughs> what he's doing to his weird okay, ass shit. But maybe explain who is Tingle. Tingle is a Hylian uh, or fairy, depending on who you ask, uh, who is interested in collecting rupees or just sort of being in the mix of adventures. His intent and his point in any given game is uh, sort of up for debate, I guess, or up for whatever they want to assign yeah. him. But this is where he gets interesting to me is that he is one of those elements that gets reiterated in every game. So is he somehow connected to the yeah. all-encompassing history of Hylia? That's what I love, that these characters just keep getting sure redone over and over again. Recycled. Yeah is one of my favorite things about uh, like the Osama Tezuka sort of universe uh, of like Astro yeah. Boy and Metropolis and all of the stuff that he did was that he would reuse his characters, mm. like his, his um, archetypes or whatever you want to call them, the models specifically as other characters in other works. And I always mm-hmm. love that. Yeah. Agreed. That's awesome. So who's your favorite character uh, with Tingle taken? <laughs> Tingle is taken. Um, I would say Tingle is definitely up there, but I really love Impa. I thought you were going to say Eponia or whatever her name is. No. <laughs> no. The, the horse. horse. <laughs> <laughs> I really love the horse. Uh, no, I love Impa, who is kind of um, Princess Zelda's like bodyguard or nurse, or depend like depending on mm-hmm. the storyline. Again, yeah. I, I just like that she's kind of like this badass warrior in the timeline that i most enjoy Mm -hmm. and uh yeah i just think like i i I like a good warrior bodyguard lady that's fair as we know uh let's let's dive in let's let's walk through this timeline do you mind if i start us do it go for it so after the goddesses created the triforce and hylia slash the goddesses created the i guess planet of hyrule or or land of hyrule i'm not really sure if it's a planet or a land or what it's hard to tell, isn't it? Yeah, I've never circumvented anything in a Zelda game, so I don't know if it's a globe or not. <laughs> um, so then we get so we get the creation of land and sky, and we end up with our first game on the timeline, which is the Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword. Yes. Here, it's the ancient battle and the reincarnation of the goddess Hylia. Uh, and also, it's, there's a note here, and I think this is important. It's noted as the return to the surface. Mm-hmm. And that may be important later when we do some theorizing. <laughs> yep. Uh, should we keep moving, or do you want to do the next one? Yeah, keep moving. I... All right. 
So we return to the surface. I'm, I'm working off of the Zelda.com official timeline here, just FYI. Uh, Sacred Realm mm-hmm. is sealed. Uh, Hyrule Kingdom is established. And then we get into some of the Game Boy games, which I have not played. Uh, we have uh, yeah. The Legend of Zelda, The Minish Cap, uh, which we see the rise of the Great evil game. Vati, a recurring character as well. Uh, followed by The Legend of Zelda Four Swords, which is the resurrection of Vati. Uh, Hyrulean Civil War happens in there at some point, and then we hit the breaking point, Mm -hmm. the sort of pivot upon what everything happens, which is The Legend of Zelda, Ocarina of Time. One of arguably like the most famous versions of Legend of Zelda. Uh, Yeah, Uh, just absolutely a stunning game. If you got to play this when it first came out, you were like, mind blown, you've entered a new world, a new dimension of playing games and storytelling and you're just you're there it's something that i remember when you first set out on the horse and start roaming the countryside thinking like this is the most epic thing i've ever seen and then currently going back and replaying it and thinking like oh my god this is not what i remember it to be <laughs> no. are you playing like the remastered yes, version yeah, or yeah. yeah the polygon count is not yeah. Yeah. It's weird how you're like, so this is like sort of what we're talking about with the music. Like my first exposure was like the Legend of Zelda OG game, Nintendo Entertainment System. And like, so do, 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 do. But somehow over time, my brain has turned it into like, you know, a full orchestral arrangement Mm -hmm. with like string section and everything. And it's like, it's epic as hell. And my brain has done that to the polygon count of Ocarina of Time. I see it differently in my mind than the way it played on screen is it the same for you yeah it's definitely the same because i i don't know i i kind of think that that was the magic of video games from our childhood and growing up because that is you had to fill in the rest of the story Mm -hmm. the music with your brain like there's still quite a bit of imagination going on Mm -hmm. whereas now everything is very present for you and you just have to experience it versus like actually engage and think about it more so yeah. i definitely have that same same experience it's somewhere between book and movie isn't yeah, it yeah it um, is yeah the participation factor which isn't like i'm not trying to say you don't participate in a movie or you don't participate no, it's just a different a modern video different game. way yeah different way of doing it we definitely if you got into a world that was like 8-bit graphic though like mm-hmm. you were like it was a good game <laughs> something about that really swallowed you up and, yeah. and that's how i felt yeah. about the polygon count in ocarina i i see it very vividly as something other than it actually was mm-hmm. the first time i played song of storms uh oh. is probably the moment for me where i'm like this is different gameplay this is a, it was a final fantasy 6 moment for me mm. um there are games where suddenly the idea of playing games has leveled up for me and yeah ocarina of time was one in the same way that final fantasy 6 was for me oh i definitely feel that yeah yeah, just like the epicness of the story, like we're doing something different here. We're approaching things different. And yeah. we get that again later on in this very series. This is a series that has done that again and again. So many times. Yeah. Okay, so we we've we've reached the pivotal game yes. and then the timeline splits. Splits. And I often I I was talking to this about you and other people. I always forget that it's yeah. three timelines. It's not two. It is. It's three timelines. Yeah. Yeah. We get hero defeated. And then Hero Triumphant. And those are the two that I think of. But then when you hit Hero Triumphant, it splits into Child Era. Yes. Uh, where you know, uh, Ganon's, uh, Ganon is like a type of candy. Ganon, yeah. Uh, where Ganon's plot is stopped. And then Adult Era, where he has to defeat Ganon after the plot has been like fulfilled. So he still yeah. wins in both of those scenarios, but as a child or as an adult. And those split into two yeah. separate scenarios as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, so which one do you want to go down first? Heroes Defeated? It is the single timeline. Should we roll through that? Yeah, let's do the Heroes Defeated timeline. That's a good one. Okay, the Heroes Defeated. Sorry, Link. You didn't You didn't win. You didn't do it. Uh, the Decline of Hyrule and the Last Hero. Yeah. Uh, we get the Imprisoning War. Don't know what that is. Um, I could probably find out, but we're just going to keep rolling. And then we get everyone's first... Like, best memory Zelda game, uh, The Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past. So good, yeah. It's a dark and stormy night. You wake up and don't really know what's going on, and you're suddenly sent off to a castle to go on an adventure. It really just brings you in all of a sudden. Yeah. 
super powerful. And then we get one uh, after that, uh, Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening. This was a game that was more recently re-released on the Switch, and it was a blast. I really loved it. It was so beautiful. I love the original Game Boy version, but Mm -hmm. replaying it on Switch, like it was just so joyful. I absolutely adored it. It was a delight. So Mm -hmm. we're following this timeline again. Uh, After A Link to the Past, there's a resurrection of Ganon. Uh, Zelda Link's Awakening, spoiler alert. Spoilers! You are stuck in a dream, uh, and eventually, what happens when the dreamer awakes? And I love that idea because it's kind of the same as like Final Fantasy X, where do you want to? Are you are you and your mic okay there? No, it's it's all over the place. Thing, my feet are falling asleep, so I gotta adjust. Anyway, um, I love again. Spoiler alert! Spoilers. It's like in Final Fantasy X, that whole concept of the dreamer and world, like a world within a world, sure. and we're but Zanarkand. like we're we're just players in a dream, and that's what I absolutely mm-hmm. loved about that um, Link's Awakening, because I just when it ended, I was like, so what happened? Yeah, yeah, it's and up I there. just loved FF10, it. Link's yes. Awakening, Super Mario Brothers Two. Yep. It was all a dream. Uh, and somehow that's not as insulting as when it happens in a TV mm-hmm. show or a series or movie. Because uh, you've still had the experience of, of that adventure, I guess. Yeah. Uh, so we follow up. Link finally wakes up. We get the Legend of Zelda Oracle of Ages and the Legend of Zelda Oracle of Seasons. Mm-hmm. Did you play those? No. I, I didn't did either. Uh, maybe I should. They're on Virtual Console for Switch. So it mm-hmm. might be something worth dipping into. Uh, followed by Legend of Zelda, A Link Between Worlds, which is sort of a direct sequel in its own way to A Link to the Past. And I love A Link Between Worlds. This is where they sort of reinvent the idea of the game again, and you are able to like fall down into like this 2D yeah. version of yourself and enter, uh, I believe it's the same dark world or a different dark world. Yeah, but it's it's smart because that's one of the things that I was a criticism I had. But then the more I thought about it, it's also part of the Zelda universe because I was, John and I were talking about um, the recently released footage of gameplay from um, the newest Zelda game coming out. Yeah. And I said, you know, it's it's expensive and it's basically the exact same map, but just extended They've added some more onto it. I'm really curious to see if they've really elaborated on it or just added some flying islands in the sky and that's about it. But then the more I think about it, the more I realize they've been doing that for many, many games where they're taking the same map and just flipping it on on its head. And so Link Between Worlds is a great example of that where you're basically playing two maps in one and it just goes to show like the brilliance of the creators and the game developers. Yeah, it was a critically acclaimed. It sold uh, in the first five months over over 2.5 million copies. Uh, it's, it's closing in on 5 mil, I think, wow. over at this point. Yeah, that's amazing. Um, it's got the nostalgic feel, but new, you know, it's the same sort of story. Ganon gets resurrected again somehow. You got to go stop them. Mm-hmm. But uh, it was it was unique and interesting. And it was uh, just, again, it's the same but different in a way that makes it fun mm-hmm. and new to play. Um, anyhow, we've got to keep going on this timeline. Yeah. We've got to roll. Got to roll. Link Between Worlds. Uh, so this is all still on the, you know, Link got his ass yeah. kicked timeline. Bad things. And then we got Legend of Zelda Triforce Heroes. Did not play this one. It was a multiplayer Yeah, version. I played that one. And I, I mean, I don't, I've said this before. I don't like, I like to play alone. I'd like to yeah, play alone, too. please. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want to be forced to do multiplayer. Yeah, like, come on. Don't do that to I us. I don't yeah. have friends that want to play that game with me when I want to play it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's it. They just don't want to play at the same time. They exist, though. We have those friends. <laughs> yeah, I have friends. Well, and the thing is, you needed more than one friend. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I mean, I can't, no, I can't yeah. promise that. Acquaintance, somebody that you pay to play with you. Yeah. Basically, yeah, turn to Reddit to see if you can find someone that will play with you and not be a dick. See, nowadays, that seems like a thing people do. You just hop on a Discord yeah. and find somebody that will jump onto the game the same time as you. Yeah. Well, I sent you that video of the person talking about Animal Crossing and how they used um, Discord and Reddit to find positive mm-hmm. people. But you also run the risk of opening yourself up to not positive people. Any hoozle. Yeah, any hoozle. The monarchs of Hyrule use the Triforce, Tragedy of Princess Zelda the One, oh. or, or the First, if you will. 
the one. So this brings yes. us back to OG game on the Link sucked timeline. We get Legend of Zelda, the original game. Ganondorf returns as the sort of twisted evil pig man, Ganon. That's right, Ganondorf. Don't get him twisted, Ganon. He drops. Wait, yeah, he drops the he drops the dwarf when he becomes uh, pig man. Pig man, yeah, he's just Ganon yeah. then. And then directly followed by uh, Zelda Two: The Adventure of Link, mm-hmm. um, where you're you're more dungeon crawly, jumping down, fighting those weird dudes with shields that are always blocking you. Yes. Ugh, frustrating. Yeah, and that that finishes off the uh, hero defeated timeline mm-hmm. for us. Then we go back to the other Divergent who hero is successful or triumphant as child or adult. Which one do you want to talk about? I, you want to take us down the next one? I think we do child. Uh, yeah. Just chronologically speaking, let's go child. Or wait, which one ends with... Uh, what's the most recent game on either of those t- timelines? <sighs> That's a good question. So I'm looking at the timeline from Zelda Dungeon, not... Which one are you looking at? Oh... I'm at the officials, like Zelda.com by Nintendo. Uh, and it's got a really great interactive uh, interactive timeline. That's that's pretty impressive. Yeah, it's, it's really great. It's a nice feature. I think we do child. It looks like okay. that's the way to go here. Um, do you mind if I continue on or do you want to roll with go it? Go for it. No, go for it. This is All great. Right. So the hero is triumphant, uh, you know, in this version of things, um, not... Not only does Link win, but he stops Ganon before he can even implement his plan in Ocarina of Time. And uh, mm-hmm. we end up in the Twilight Realm and the legacy of the hero. Uh, the sacred yes. realm remains protected. And we end up with the, I would say, arguably best game in the series to some people, to many people. Mm-hmm. The Legend of Zelda, Majora's Mask. That moon is going to fucking get you. Oh, the, the pressure I felt playing that game where I was like, shit, I got to do what? Yep. In a time frame? Oh my, like, it was so much pressure, but what a beautiful, beautiful game. The villain antagonist is such an interesting character as well, because not necessarily evil, just sort of misguided or corrupted. Uh, Yeah. And and that's very interesting. And and, but that leads to apparently the demon thief Ganondorf is executed. Uh, Somebody (laughs) killed him. Yeah. Doesn't say here who. Uh, I'm going to assume it was Impa. Probably. It was Impa. Like, uh, I, I assume as much. Which leads to one of my... Like, this is hard. I keep saying one of my favorite games. They're all, like, one of my favorite games. But mm-hmm. Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess holds a very special spot in my heart. It came out with the Wii. Yeah. It was... Yeah. Uh, the first time I'd sort Beautiful. of, like, become something else as an adult and move somewhere else and was doing something on my own. And this game was sort of my my thing this is what i did yeah and uh just a beautiful game you get to transform into wolf link you get to deal with midna and the twilight realm which is not the same as like the low rule or the dark world or whatever but mm-hmm. another alternate sort of place and the shadow invasion and yeah. like and that giant battle on the bridge it was a very like adult game mm-hmm. yeah there's a lot of sex in comparison with all the other ones <laughs> So a lot of boobs, boobs. <laughs> in Hyrule. The boobs of Hyrule. We we got introduced to the brothels of Hyrule. The brothels of Hyrule. <laughs> that was a weird mechanic to <laughs> shove into the game. Uh, but, you know, this is a great example of a series growing up with its audience. It was also, you know, um, later on we're going to talk about the the impact that Legend of Zelda has had on pop culture. And that's what really brought us to The Witcher, of being able to look at boobs. Yeah. All right, let's get In to that. Medieval times. Let's find a way. To, <laughs> wait, <laughs> is Andrew Sabarowski and the no. Witcher actually directly uh, no. directly connected? Okay, I thought maybe you knew something I didn't know. No. I, I didn't realize we were just carrying the joke on a little farther. Yes, and Ben. Yes, and all yes. fantasy uh, is directly related to Link, and all the sexual fantasy to Twilight Princess. Yes, I mean that's just uh, a given. Yeah, <laughs> Come on. just a given. And then this timeline sort of rounds off with the Legend of Zelda Four Swords Adventure, another one where they try to trick you into having friends, and I was having none of it. Yeah, come on, people. Like, know your audience a little bit. Uh, So if you know the story to that one, cool, let me know. Uh, But it apparently is the reincarnation of both Ganondorf and Vati, so that's that's sucky. No. You don't want that to happen. I have questions, though, because that to me, like, this is the adult version. Yeah. Right? Like this is this is not the child era, right? 
Well, this is the thing. Each iteration can be its own thing because Wind Waker comes off of, as we'll see here, the, the adult timeline when the adult is victorious. Which I don't, because it's Wind Waker. Yeah, okay, let's let's go that and we'll we'll get there. So yes, talk us through the adult era. Okay, specifically though, these eras are called yeah. like, you know, child era and adult era only because of where the victory uh, of Ganon happens in yes. that yeah. Ocarina of Time game. So adult era, the hero of the winds, a new world. So Link gets his ocarina, he can travel through time, and he ends up finishing the game as an adult. Yes. We hear Song of Storms, etc., blah, blah, blah. So Ganondorf is sealed and then resurrected, and Hyrule is sealed and then flooded. Yes. And we get uh, another just absolute wonderful reinvention of the series, The Legend of Zelda, The Wind Waker. And I gotta say, it's my absolute favorite game. Maybe, like... I can understand that. Top five of all time. Like, I love this game to death. I love it. I love it. It is so unique and so interesting. And it starts the way all great Link games do with Link waking up somewhere weird and new. Being a lazy bones. Being a lazy bones. Does he have a sister? Is that really his sister? We don't know. We don't really understand. He's got a grandma. Like, he's got a family. He's always got relatives. This is the interesting thing. It's not like we get, like, a Mario thing where it's Mario yeah. in a new situation. Like, Link seems to be connected to whatever world he's in. And Yes. He's kind of like, um sliders like is it an awakening yeah is it an awakening like the version of link that is the hero like is slipping between these dimensions or timelines and this is when we get into the multiverse like this version of link has a family he's an island person lives right right like it's so wonderful or is it more like a sailor moon thing where she is a reincarnation and like eventually awakens her memories and i think i lean toward that one more it's not a single consciousness it's a a stacked memory sort of thing I believe that it is like it's a string theory multiverse that we're looking at all of these different sandwich sandwich options, if you will, mm. of different timelines and different opportunities. Because it just, anyway, we'll get into that. But like, yeah, but we're going to yes. further confuse that in a few minutes. Okay, so Link <laughs> travels the world in his dragon boat, uh, finding treasure chests with his amazing new mechanic where he just drops a, a giant like what is that oh, God, what's the word game. for that thing it's a claw it's a, a little claw, claw thing but like, yeah like what's the like real a crane. word a crane thank you yeah. that's what i'm looking for <laughs> jesus he drops his cl- crane fuck it let's move on ganondorf yeah is beaten but then resurrected what how does that happen well he's resurrected for the game yeah no i know uh, uh legend of zelda phantom hourglass comes excellent next. excellent game wonderful yeah. so that's a direct sort of sequel to wind waker right yeah uh, we're not dealing with a new link there. We're dealing with the same link. Same, from Wind yeah, same one. Okay. Uh, they discover a new continent. A new Hyrule Kingdom is founded. They don't deflood the world. No. So this might be the only game that suggests that Hyrule is a planet. Yeah, like the entire planet is covered in water, or the first, like yeah. what they have access to. Yeah. A uh, new Hyrule Kingdom is founded, and then the end of this sort of timeline branch, we get the sort of middling game, Legend of Zelda: Spirit Tracks, which tries to. I liked I know, it. Yeah, I mean, it feels like it did not quite, for me, I played it a bit and I couldn't finish it because oh, I the mechanic it. of it wasn't for me. It just, it was really like, okay, obviously, okay, I wondered because you know how there's like a really big subculture of folks in Japan who love trains. I mean, there's there's train people everywhere in the world, but... Oh, I mean, I love trains. I would love it if we had a national train line across Ugh, this country. Wouldn't that be super helpful? I feel like you shouldn't even bother yes. messing around with being a politician in this country until you put a national rail line on your platform. And as well, if a person doesn't take public transit on the regular, sit down. Like, you don't deserve to be a politician. Because if you're getting driven everywhere, <laughs> you have no idea what it's like to be amongst the people. What if I did take the transit for some sort of extended period of my life, but don't do it anymore? Is that okay? No, because things have changed so much. Mm, yeah. Bernie Sanders walks and takes transit. Try not to get into the R Calgary subreddit oh. uh, of, of how bad our, our transit and train stations are doing. It ain't good. But anyway, Spirit Tracks <laughs> is not a reflection of our current <laughs> transportation no. network. But... I just, I, I thought it was a really interesting thing. Like, Is it a direct continuation again? Is it a third with the same link or is this a reincarnation? I always kind of it feels like it might be. assumed that yeah, it was. It sounds like a new yeah. Hyrule Kingdom is founded and uh, I guess Link and Zelda are there to do it. Somebody found the drain and they, they drained the world. <laughs> or just found a continent that wasn't <laughs> flooded. So 
at this point, those are all of the games up until Breath of the Wild. Yes, so Breath of the Wild comes out. Breath of the Wild is not on the official timeline. Uh, and Breath of the Wild, uh, the first statement that we get about Breath of the Wild is that it is not on the same timeline or in the same universes as these other mm-hmm. games. Um, let's pause there. Let's, let's take a little break. Let's take a little break. You just wait, and we'll talk about Breath of the Wild when we get back. After these messages, we'll be right back. The clay one? Yeah, same. I'd like to know that the messages were going to come back after. You know, I also really liked it when they played the little cartoons because that's where that, like, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, like that would come on. Oh, on, on, yeah, that was between Sesame Street segments. Oh, yeah, CBC style. Yeah. If you haven't seen 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, oh, Google literally that greatest. and you will find the most like disco acid, acid trip animation that a toddler could be exposed to. It's like ASMR. Hmm. Because it was great. Like you watched it and you're like, this is a great song and I really like, oh, it's so good. Anyway. What I really want is a super cut of, because every segment of that particular song ended with a different, yes. with the marble yes. going into a different number. But I would, what I want is a super cut with every number okay. and the ball. And it will be like 25 minutes <laughs> we long. We can find that record long. for you. I'll probably be sick of it. <laughs> like, oh God. Anyway. Okay. <laughs> All right, it's time for Who's That Pokemon? Who's That Pokemon? Do you have one? Because if not, I do. I feel like I already know what yours is, so I want to, I, I've got to guess. Oh, God. Do I do a last minute switch? No, dude. No, I, well, I don't know. I'm not the boss of you. Oh, I think I, you kind of are. <laughs> <laughs> do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Okay, if you guess this right away, then from now on, I'm going to throw super curveballs in upcoming okay. segments. All right, the silhouette. I have to bring my finger back here yep. so you can see it. Like this. Okay. There's three sort of points Is it at tangle? the top. It's tangle. God damn it. <laughs> I knew it. I could have pivoted to yes. a pokery at the last minute, but it just wasn't true. It was always tangle. I had a guess that it might be a, co- co- a cokery, which we can talk about in a minute, but yeah. I mean, it's tangle. I know you, Ben. It's tangle. It's tangle. It had to be tangle. He is He's awesome. Great. I love that he throws confetti in the air. Like, he's awesome. He's fabulous. He's lovely. I love him. He is a celebration wherever he goes. He is a celebration. That is what I like about That is the perfect I love explanation about Tingle. of Tangle. Well done, Tingle ben. is a celebration. Yes. A party on the go. A festival. Happiness. Ah. Joy. I hope that there's more Tangle in the new game. How could there not be? I mean, I hope so. Speaking of, I need to take a Tingle. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, na 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 It's Tingle. We're back. I need to take a moment and before we get into Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom and what's coming next and where that falls on our timeline. Yes. Let's talk about the great fairies. Oh, the boobies. The, the boobies. Boob fairies. Why are they so sexy? Okay, the one that creeps me out the most is the horse one. Uh, I forgot about the horse one until just now. <laughs> Where you're, you're used to all the fairies and you're like, oh, it's a very large booby-esque woman. Love it. Gonna look this up right now. <laughs> I gotta go to Google. <laughs> ah, there it is. Horse. Horse fairy. Yeah, terrifying. But also awesome. When it comes up, you're like, am I having a stroke? Is this the only... Am I still attracted to is this... it? I'm not. Are you? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, somebody posited to me recently that everyone's a bit of a furry. So there you go. I mean, I don't know that I'd go with that. Were but you okay. attracted to Robin Hood from the Disney movie? Okay, but yes, we've talked about this. I mean, yeah, you're right. We have done this episode. We can't do this again. You're fine, yeah. <laughs> so how does that mean that you're not a bit of a furry? Yeah, there you go. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. Uh, Zelda Horse Fairy is sort of terrifying, but in a good way. <laughs> Super terrifying. And as far as I know, this is the only iteration of them, right? I think so. I don't. Is in Breath of the Wild. It's um, yeah, Breath of the Wild is the only one that I can think of where, um, you have. So in Zelda, there's often these caves that you come across where there is a fairy fountain. Yeah, it's another sort of uh, yeah, one of those a trope. Yeah, continuing elements of the Zelda series. Yeah. Uh, you know, like your Sids and your Final Fantasies or your yes. Eidolons or whatever. But this is the only one where when you find a fairy fountain, it's populated by like 
an actual god. Yeah. That is massive and godlike and has giant boobs. Giant boobs and also just some wild style. And, you know, uh, you know, definitely a an aspect of and, sex. And the laughing. <laughs> like, ugh. Are they mad laughing? Like, I, at first I was like, have I angered They're it? They're a little bit scary, yeah. And I think that's part of what makes them sexy. Yeah. <laughs> if you're not scared... You're not turned on. Okay, I'm going to stop there. But <laughs> it's, but well, that's what I like about them is because they are godlike and it helps to add to the folklore of Hyrule. So love it. Absolutely. And for some reason, they're just into Link enough that they want to help him out. Yeah, they're always like kind of flirting. And I remember thinking once. Always a little bit flirty. How would that work? You're so big and he's like a little gerbil. So. Well, they're, <laughs> oh, Jesus, uh, visions of that Richard Gere thing pop into your head. I'm just saying, how does it work? If you don't know about Richard Gere and the goo, uh, and the, and the gerbil, the gerbil, uh, the gerbil google it or not it sounds like a very messed up kids yeah, book geez. richard gear and the funny what? gerbil like no and the no, adventure no. of the gerbil yeah oh i mean gosh. i'm just looking at all of these the great fairy picks and yeah and and they're sexy uh these great they fairies are. they are unstoppably attractive for some reason they've just got a je ne sais quoi there's something about them yeah there really is they are who they are and they make no apologies mm-hmm. they exist And they are fabulous. So we're talking Breath of the Wild at this point. So we've deviated from the timeline. We've started (laughs) Breath of the Wild. There are still a lot of the same tropes of all the other Zelda games. Like we have um, the the Great Deku Tree. We have the fairies. We have Beetle, who is another great character. Beetle is great. Beetle is wonderful. I just want to point out, I say Deku. Deku, do you see? Okay, Deku. Yeah, I just I like it. Deku I like the tree. variations because these things exist in your head and your head alone. Yes. And then you say it out loud for the first time and other people are like, that's not how it is. Like, that's not how it... Well, I remember... Deku nuts. <laughs> Deku nuts. Anyway, what is yeah. your favorite part of the great Deku tree, Ben? Uh, the nuts. <laughs> well, no, you're supposed to say the children of the great tree. Wow. No, I mean, come the on. You set me up for the nuts joke. Cokeries. That's the true. The cokeries are great. Uh, they're, they're fantastic. So cute. But sticking with the timeline here, let's get into that first. So the producers and stuff come out and say, it's not really part of the timeline, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. And then you get into this game and suddenly there are references all over the game to the events of not one, not two, but all three of the divergent timelines uh, in this world. And so the theory that exists now and has been bounced around and is possibly... Uh, given veracity from some people that have worked on the games, this is a convergent timeline. All three of these timelines have somehow re-coalesced into this one place. Mm -hmm. Uh, Now, does that make sense from any sort of like multiversal string theory? Not really. No. Uh, The concept of convergent timelines doesn't have a theoretical Mm -hmm. a theoretical, I don't know, whatever theory. A theoretical theory to it that I could find um but who cares this is a game so it's great it's It's a great idea that like suddenly it's all the same again and like Mm -hmm. what does that mean for link though in any sort of version of link that we're talking about i don't know and i always kind of wondered about him because he never he has no speaking parts he's always the silent hero except for his Mm -hmm. hayas and are we the reincarnation of the hero are we playing that we are so we have the memories of his previous adventures. Yes, that's a great way to look at it. We have all the knowledge of previous games and we are embodying the god-like aspect of Link. What happens to the version of Link that gets displaced when we show up? Darkness. Death. Yeah, because he's he's a vessel. Yeah. That's why he has no speaking. That's kind of weird. And he sad. doesn't really have a personality. But like, did he speak before we jumped in there? I don't know because in Breath of the Wild, is this too heavy no, because for... I thought about this because in Breath of the Wild, there's the four champions, and mm-hmm. two of the champions are pretty like whatever with Link, and one of them falls in love with him, and one of them hates him or isn't a big fan of him. Mm-hmm. And I remember thinking, yeah. like, is it because he has to have a personality yes. for that to happen? Yeah, so he exists in some sort of capacity. You can't hate someone who's an empty vessel. 
or you hate them because they're an empty vessel. I don't know. I mean, we're putting a lot of ourselves into this, which is totally the point. Uh, that's the <laughs> fun of this is to make our own theory. Yeah. But yeah, we could be the godlike aspect, the carry forward of Link that is the connective tissue between his iterations. Mm-hmm. Or it could be an awakening thing. Uh, every time he awakens, he suddenly has past memories and past skills and they're back with yeah. him. Uh, either's fine. But that's a big, like, um, I guess, like science fiction theme mm-hmm. is that of like the Groundhog Day, like re- repeatedly waking up to the same day or to the same vessel. Sure. Yeah. And the cyclical nature of sort of uh, mythic mm-hmm. storytelling as well. Yeah the cyclical nature of it. And so this is, okay, this is where we get past Breath of the Wild. we got Tears of the Kingdom coming up now. Yes. And we're getting into Ben Zelda conspiracy theory territory now. Okay, yes. Let's let's hear it. What do you got? Uh, Tinfoil hats, everyone. Crinkle that, crinkle that metal onto your head. Okay. Okay, so Tears of the Kingdom, suddenly we're adding that third, well, there was always three dimensions. That was one of the beautiful things about Breath of the Wild was just oh, how gorgeous it yeah. was and, and how big. And like how you could be engaged with climbing in a stamina wheel. Anything, yeah. And you're just climbing for like five minutes and you're like, holy fuck, I feel tense. Like, am I going to make it? Can I, you know, do I have enough stuff? Beautiful. Yeah. Tears of the Kingdom is adding in this element of Sky Islands again. Mm-hmm. And do you remember earlier when we were talking uh, about Skyward Sword? Yes. There's that line in the official timeline that talks about return to the surface. Yes. And so what I am supposing here... Is that, is this a circle? Is the Mm. Legend of Zelda a circle? Have we now come to the end of the timeline, which is also the beginning of the timeline again, and we suddenly lose Hyrule, Mm -hmm. the planet, and we're back up into the sky onto, what is it called, Skyloft and and the floating continents again? Is that something that might happen here? I, I could definitely get in on this theory. And suddenly Zelda is just rings upon rings upon rings, like either connecting to each other or branching off. If you have like, you know, think of it as like three pieces of metal intertwined Mm -hmm. and then they come apart for a while and coil on their own. And then eventually they they can be intertwined and and tied back to the end. And uh, yeah, yeah, we're high. (laughs) We're all doing drugs. (laughs) (laughs) Fucking fried. I always wondered because as soon as I saw that, like Link's taking to the skies for the next one. And I immediately was like, so does that mean that Skyward Sword comes after this in the timeline? But also before this. Because in uh, Skyward Sword, when you do return to the ground, there's all these artifacts and, you know. Evidence of there having been a kingdom previously. Right. And and beasts that have been sealed into the earth or whatever they're calling it, into the, the soil of Hyrule. And so that's why I was thinking, like, that would be really interesting. Yeah, you can't use Earth unless you're on Earth. Isn't that a yeah. conundrum? Yeah, so in, in on the planet of Hyrule. As soon as we start traveling to every any other planets, yeah, the dirt, the soil. I love it. I love it. I think that would yeah. be a really great next step, like, if they did want to take it full crazy pants circle, that the next game... They can go back to Skyward yes. Sword, but it's like a different thing happens. Another branch, another another piece of metal tied into this loop. Yeah, uh, this coiling loop. But that's what I think. Like many Nintendo, like the Mario franchise is great about doing. Now you can play the exact same game as Luigi or Wario, sure, but with like a slightly different approach to it. So now you can play Skyward Sword, but like maybe a little bit evil, or maybe you play it from something's different. Yeah, something yeah. just slightly different. You're one of the pumpkins, or the sky whales. <laughs> the the birds. Yeah. Yeah, you're one of those giant pelican I love birds. That. And the whole game's from your perspective. So you don't do a no. lot. You just occasionally somebody jumps on your back and then you They, they you drop whistle. Them off. You go a flying, you drop them off, you go back to the yeah. loft, you're good. The whole game is just you doing it's like crazy taxi, <laughs> but you're a bird and it's Link. Uh yeah. <laughs> Anyhow, this is my theory is that uh we we Zelda is now mm-hmm. a circle. Uh and and that still allows you to do anything you want, but you just plug in different strands or different you know, branches, uh, different timelines into the same yeah. coil. And it always ends up in the same place again. Skyward Sword. And then it becomes weird and dark and strange. Yeah, and then maybe, like, he becomes self-aware and is like, haven't I done this already? Oh, no. AI. <laughs> ah, beep up. Whatever. <laughs> yeah, that's my theory, though. Love that's it. where we're going. Yeah. I love it. Uh, this will be easily disproved if the end of Skyward Sword <laughs> is not on a sky island i'm really interested i can't wait to play the game um it's 
it comes out the week before um, May Long weekend, and we're going away. That's a very precise timeline. Yes, I know, because we're going away for May Long weekend, and I'm debating, do I bring the Switch with me? Yeah, you bring the Switch. Because we're supposed to be going out into nature. We're not camping. We're, we're going to like a little cabin, and they do have a TV in the cabin, but a part of me is like, am I going to drive all the way to this cabin? I played most a Breath of the Wild handheld. Uh, I felt more intimate with the game yeah. in, that, in that capacity. That's true. Yeah, no, I totally get that. I'm saying I slept with a video <laughs> game. <laughs> intimate. Oh. <laughs> May 12th, 2023, in case you're you're looking to pick that up, you can pre-order it now. Uh, it's already gone gold, I think I was reading today. Of course, yeah. Uh, the pre-sales have made it. I don't know what that means. It's a certain mm-hmm. uh, pre-purchase threshold, I suppose. I don't know how many copies gold is. Though. Lots. Uh, let's a, say a million. A million, lots of millions, and somehow it's already been. Uh, it's already won most wanted and most anticipated at the Golden Joystick and the Game Awards. So there you go. Oh, hey, good job, Zelda. You're doing it. You're doing it. Doing it. That's just the timelines. We could probably talk for multiple episodes because we haven't even gotten into. Sure. Like the music or oh, um, beautiful. like the Zelda and pop culture. I had a whole list. The best versions sure. of Link or Zelda, just even like your favorite games and aspects of it. Yeah. There's so much to talk about. Yeah, our favorite versions. Yeah, absolutely. Favorite. Yeah. Favorite mechanics, yeah. Uh, things that you've liked the best, like hand gliding in, in, and climbing in Breath of the Wild are some of my favorites. Or even just like the art styles, because so many sure. of the games have varied in... Shift. Like, it's great. Yeah, that's the other interesting thing about Breath of the Wild, because it kind of takes that Wind Waker cell shading, but then marries it to the Twilight Princess yes. sort of uh, grown-up yep. style. So that's an interesting combo there. Mm-hmm. Uh, is that evidence for a convergent timeline? I say yes. Maybe. Yeah. No, we have a lot of other stuff we should talk about at some point uh, mm-hmm. about Zelda here, but I'm glad we got to do a deep dive on the timeline, because literally I wanted to put out my theory that it is a a circle. <laughs> that's what I've decided. It sounds plausible, right? Anyone who's really played all the games, yeah. Yeah, I think like it makes sense if you were going to go down that route of like fan theories. It, like I'm, I'm there with you. I agree. Okay, and one more before we get out of here. You know how in Breath of the Wild, when you start, you're sort of downloaded into that body. Yes. So if that's what Link is, he is always a construct that is downloaded either via us or via like a uh-huh. at some point an awakening program that jumps into him when necessary and awakens him in every game um but there's a there's a suggestion that he is always sort of a a being of that sort of stored data that's like an assassin's creed type thing yeah sort of except assassin's creed kind of sucks and they don't need any of the future stuff (laughs) i love assassin's creed i don't like playing any of the shit where you're in the real world no it's the worst part of the game like ah it takes me out of it every time and i'm like no put me back in greece with cassandra and don't make me have a baby (laughs) We'll get into that some other time. <laughs> Fucking poor choices made in game series. Yeah. Oh, uh, we got to do an episode about that. Just like the worst choices of. Yeah, bad choices in games. <laughs> bad cho- the very worst choices made in like video games or TVs yeah. or movies. Like the jumping of the shark. Yeah. 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 Uh, Cassandra. Well, let's bring this uh, full circle, if you will. I guess we did. Return to the sky. Return to Hyrule. Um that's it that's the timeline yeah uh, let us know what you think about the timeline our theories uh yeah fan theories want to hear it yeah what do you got what kind of weird stuff yeah we didn't get into even like the chic zelda thing which is awesome there's so many more things like the we different could, species the best species we could have many episodes on this yeah we'll do another episode we'll call it the legend of zeldork 2 uh a dork to the past a dork to the past <laughs> something like that and we'll just do it like a fun one where we talk about all our favorite aspects of the game yeah just rapid fire yeah but uh i guess that's it for this one we wrote we rolled it uh all around time is a flat circle oh no i kind of did you like uh true detective i like the first season you just quoted true detective yeah i don't no. know if i finished the second uh, season we finished the second season and got halfway through the third season and then forgot about it the first season yeah. was wonderful uh, yeah doesn't have the staying no, power of zelda it sure doesn't no 
Well, thanks for joining us. Uh, you know, if you could do us a huge favor, we're looking for some people to go give us some uh, very positive reviews on the old Apple Podcasts app or wherever you're getting that stuff. Do it, do it, do a solo yeah. for us. Go, go, leave a really nice one. Yeah, and then uh, tell us about it. And I don't know, stickers, we'll give you stuff or something. Stickers and shirts, stickers <laughs> or something like that. Um, and uh, until next time, dork, 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 dork. Thanks for listening to Dork Matters. If you like the podcast, subscribe, give us a rating, and tell your friends about us. If you are a fellow dork and have a dork issue that you think we need to discuss, tell us on our social media. You can find us on Instagram and Twitter. You can also check out original art and other content from Ben and myself. We'd like to say a big thank you to Yabra for the use of our theme song, Dance, off of their Astral EP, as well as a thank you to Jess Schmidt for producing and editing our podcast. Thanks, Jess. Dork Matters. This podcast is created on the traditional territories of the Blackfoot Nations, which includes the Sigzika, the Begaini, and the Gaina. We also acknowledge the Stony Nakoda Nation, Sutena, and Métis Nation Region 3.